A lot of students or people were asking me what is the difference between NSCP 2015 and NSCP 2010. With the entry of COVID, all schools and review centers were forced to stop their physical operation. All shifted to online. Different centers use different advertising tricks and gimmicks that cause more confusion in the minds of reviewers and students rather than help them. But in order to give you clear idea on what you will actually experience in our online review, we created this channel so that you will see, know, and experience firsthand how we do it online. But before we begin our discussion today, please don't forget to visit, like our FB page, Padilla Review Center. The link is found below. Please also subscribe in our YouTube channel. Please don't forget to click the notification bell. Choose all so that you will always be updated and notified regarding all our posts. Also, please don't hesitate and we will appreciate it if you will like every post that we will make. This is for all of you who are reviewing and students of math, science, and engineering, most especially civil engineering. So if you have problems or questions or topics that you want us to discuss, just send it to us through our contact numbers below. So let's begin. A lot of students or people were asking me what is the difference between NSCP 2015 and NSCP 2010. Huh? So let us begin with the load combinations. So as far as elastic analysis is concerned known as ASD or alternate strength design method. No? So this is based on elastic property of our material so in WSD or in concrete design this is called the WSD working strength design now and in steel design it is called ASD alternate strength design so it is the normal method that we are using and it will be used for quite a long time before it can be fully transitioned to LRFD load resistance factor design the equivalent of ultimate strength design in concrete and it is lrfd in steel so why did i say that it will still take a long time before the front phase of steel design will be lrfd simply because a lot of structures were designed old structures and currently a lot were still designed using asd Okay, so we need to have a smooth transition before it can happen. And although it is already LRFD is being introduced since 2010, so but here in the Philippines we are still dominantly considering ASD because there are no much available book in LRFD. Okay? And also a lot of instructors were trained and we're taught using the ASD as far as steel design is concerned. And also because structures, steel structures were designed using ASD, if you will be tasked to analyze it or to evaluate it, you still have to evaluate it based on the way it was designed, based on the code it was designed. And then you adapt it to LRFD. You get it? So what is the big difference or what was the changes made by ASEP in transitioning 2010 to 2015? 2015 NSAP was inspired or was mandated actually or dictated 
by the Yolanda Typhoon and the earthquake that happened in Cebu and Bohol. So it was a 7.2 earthquake that happened in 2013. So in 2015, NSAP ASEP released an updated NSAP which they normally release every 10 years but this time it was released in 2015 just 5 years after the NSAP 2010. Okay? Now, as far as ASD or Working Strength Design is concerned, or Alternate Stress or Strength Design Method, so these are the load combinations. Okay? So basically, the 2010 and the 2015 are the same. Your D is the lead, dead load. L is the live load. Take note of, of L sub R. L sub R is the roof live load or the this is the roof live load or it is r the rain load so only one will be used okay so whichever is more critical and when you say and when you use the roof live load you have to include the permitted reduction in that live load of all the live loads only the roof live load is permitted to be reduced okay now our h here is the lateral or horizontal load the symbol h is from the word horizontal it is the horizontal load brought about by soil pressure and the moisture or water that the soil contain now this is normally dominant in the design of our retaining wall okay now, our E is the earthquake load. So this is E. There is no change or difference between 2010 and 2015 as far as the WSD or ASD is concerned. Okay? So for F, F is the fluid load or pressure due to fluid with well-defined pressures and maximum height. It is not applicable for unpredictable force F okay now so our P is the pounding load for example you have a flat roof deck and there is a provision in order for water not to flow here okay although there is a, a drainage of course but during heavy downpour of rain, let us say that the drainage is here. So for light water inflow here, so this drainage can handle it. But during heavy downpour of rain, then there will be pond, there will be water that will be retained there. Okay? Because the inflow is greater than the outflow, then there will be water that will stay here. And the excess water will overflow through, of course, there must be an overflow drain. But still, there would be water that will be retained here. So that is the pounding load. Okay? So letter R is the rain load on undeflected roof. Okay? So rain load on undeflected, meaning originally, uh, originally in design roof okay now you our t here t is taken from the word temperature so they are the load caused by temperature changes but not limited to temperature changes it could be due to shrinkage due to creep of the material or movement due to differential level or any other combination of it and W is the wind load. So, as you can see, if you will compare really the NSCP 2010 and the 2015, 2015 is more detailed in terms of maps, in terms of tables. And uh, as far as earthquake is concerned, the load, the importance factors were adjusted. Okay? But the values, basically, there is just a small change okay all right now except in our wind loads now 
However, in the USD Ultimate Strand Design in Concrete, LRF, the Load Resistance Factor Design in Steel. But basically, the same concept. So these are our load factors with the same definition for the letters. As you can see there, the one, the only one that was changed from NSCP 2010 to 2015 was the coefficient for the wind load. In NSCP 2010, this is 0.8. So 2010 versus 2015. So in 2010, it is 0.8 W, while in 2015, it is 0.5 W. Then, in here, this one and this one, in 2010, it was 1.6 W. In 2015, it is now W. Hey! 2015 was dictated by Yolanda, okay? But not limited to Yolanda, but the primary concern was Yolanda and the earthquake. Why is it, why is it that instead of increasing the coefficient, it was decreased from 0.8 to 0.5, from 1.6 to 1? Isn't it that we have to increase it? Now, remember this. There was an increase in wind load from 2010 to 2015. W was increased. You can see that in the table of wind load in the 2000 NSCP 2015. There was really a great increase in the value of W, not to mention the, the change or the upgrade or the increase in the importance factor. However, those increased values of W will have lesser probability of occurring. These factors are about probability. So, before we use a smaller value with a probability of occurrence of 1.6. However, we increase it like, for example, Yolanda. So, with the strength of Yolanda, the probability of occurrence will now decrease. Before, it is more highly probable for typhoons lowered in strength than Yolanda to happen. So, the probability factor was 1.6. Now, when it was changed or increased to a certain stronger typhoon or wind load, then the probability was decreased. It is a combination of the two. You get it? So, this is about probabilities. This was about experience. This is what was recorded based on observation and experience. Do you follow? So the changes I underlined here, the changes, there was changes in the coefficient here from 0.8 to 0.5, here from 1.6 to 1. But let me repeat, there was also a change in the value of W. The value of W from 2010 to 2015 was increased by NSCP. Do you follow? You get it, okay? So these are the only changes made from 2010 to 2015 as far as load combination is concerned. You get it? You follow, okay? So I hope with our series in RCD, you are learning a lot from us or from me and you are learning the principles, fundamentals of RCD without focusing much on new formulas. So, I am inviting you to enroll in our RCD program. It is composed of RCD1 and RCD2. So, the program is composed of 15, at least 15 modules each. Each module is equivalent to 4 hours of physical teaching. So, meaning 
if there are 30 modules for total for RCD1 and RCD2 that is equivalent to 30 times 4 hours, 120 teaching hours physically or in classroom, it is classroom hours. In classroom, there are lots of wasted time, right? Copying, erasing, if there is an error in computation, repeating it. So it means it's more than that. So assuming you are hiring a tutor for 600 per hour, 600 times 120, that would be 72,000. But in our program, you will be paying only 1,000 for RCD1, 1,000 for RCD2. So that is only 2,000 instead of 72,000, a savings of 70. <laughs> wow, right? Okay, and the point is with modesty set aside, your instructor will be Engineer Perfecto Padilla. That's yours truly. With modesty set aside, I've been in this profession of teaching the review, teaching this subject for 32 years. Okay. So, you combine all those years of experience, that is what you are getting by attending, enrolling, subscribing to our RCD program. And there is more to it because this is our introductory program. You will be getting 50% discount if you enroll in both of the programs, meaning instead of paying 2000 for the two programs RCD1 and RCD2 you will be paying only 1000 and you can take advantage of it while the discount the promo is on board meaning effective so what are you waiting now enroll now so in order to enroll click the button below Padilla Review Center enroll then click it and you will be guided by our website so if you have any other more question, our numbers are down in the link below. So just text us, just call us so that we can accommodate whatever question or inquiry you may have. So see you.